I'm Greg Hackney and let's talk about fishing the spawn with a jig. You know, basically there, for me, you know, you think about pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn, post but actually there are phases inside of each of those. Basically the way I pick my jig is, is what stage those fish are in. So that early pre-spawn period can be a, you know, a period when the water's, depending on what part of the country you're in, anywhere from say 45 degree water temp to 55. Let's just use that roughly. Just always a good starting point to, of kind of what stage the fish should be in. That's the time of the year for me that fish are offshore, yet starting to move, be more of transition areas. It can be, be channel swings back in places that they're gonna spawn. They'll start to hang up on that last deep water before they make that final move, you know, in pre-spawn. I like a structure jig then. Basically, I like to pair my structure jig with a rage crawl. We're thinking depth wise then most of the time, you know, depending on the lake, five to 15, if you're on a lake with extremely, extremely clear water that time of the year, you might be fishing even as deep as 20 or 25. Uh, but most of the time, a half ounce to a three quarter ounce structure jig paired with just a standard striking rage crawl. It's my favorite trailer on a jig, pretty much on any jig I throw, it's my number one trailer. There are certain situations when I will use a different one, but most of the time I'm gonna use a rage crawl. Now, when that, with that being said, the next phase of pre-spawn for me is when that water is 55 to 65, and now these fish have made that move into spawning areas. Basically, what I'd like to look for then is the heaviest cover in the spawning area. It may not be the actual place that the fish makes the bed and spawns, but it'll be in the spawning area. It can be willow trees, it could be cypress trees, it can be mats, vegetation, boat docks. And then I like to target that stuff with a hack attack flipping jig. Uh, you know, depending on how thick the cover is, half ounce to three quarter, three quarter being a littler on the heavier side, you maybe you're in the southern part of the United States, half ounce would be number one choice. The next phase after that, those fish will leave that heavy cover and then they will get in more of a sparser area to actually spawn. And when they make that move then, then I'll downsize my, my jig a little more and I'll throw the, a ha still be flipping a hack attack jig, hack attack flipping jig, but I'll typically use a half ounce to a three eighths. And um, there's one little period in there during the spawn, once those fish go to spawn, and when they first move out there, I can still catch them on a jig. But I will tell you a lot of times, once the water temperature has gotten warm and they've actually went through that part where they're actually doing the deed, I like to switch to plastics and I'll start to flip plastics. Um, the next period that I'm gonna throw a jig during the spawn is what I call the late, they're still spawning, but it's late spawn. The water temperature's warm. It can be anywhere from 68 to 75. We'll just use that as a rule of thumb. And now we got fish that some of them have finished. You got still pears on the bed, but the water temperature's warm and you got male fish garden fry. Then I'm gonna reach for the hack attack swim jig, preferably in some type of bluegill flavor that matches the water color you're fishing in. Because a bluegill is the number one predator of a bass during the spawn. He tries to kill or eat every bluegill that swims close to the nest. And so it's always a good rule of thumb, like I said, to, to pick out a bluegill color. Now, with that being said, it, look, we're here in Florida right now, the water's black. Black and blue is still a great choice for a swim jig color during this period of time. But if you're in places where the water is cleaner, green pumpkin, uh, actually, you know, the bluegill color that striking has. And again, I pair the swim jig Rage crawl, it's number one. Has a lot of lift, it will help you keep that jig up, fishing it at a high rate of speed. And basically what I'm doing in is just combing those spawning flats with it. The deal is what it can do is a lot of times you'll get fish to show themselves that you wouldn't know where they were anyway. And you can come back and even throw a piece of plastic on. Now, as that period of time goes away, we're basically just reversing the first part of the pre-spawn, the post-spawn we're reversing out. So. Once the spawn is over and the majority of the fish are finished, again, I go back to look for that heavy cover in the spawning area. And a lot of those big females will move to that stuff and set up and basically they're just resting. And what you like, I like a big profile bait that's slow moving because they're not overly aggressive. They're just sitting there and on whatever heavy cover was close by. And uh, then I'll go back to throwing a hack attack jig typically a half ounce then, because what I, I, I have noticed about those fish that time of the year, unless the cover is so thick you need to use a three quarter or even a one ounce to get it in there, 
I like to put a lobster on the back. So we fished in through the spawn with just a standard size rage crawl. But after the spawn, that fish likes a big profile bait because she's trying to feed back up and get ready for summertime, basically, put a lot of her body weight back on. So then I like to put that lobster on my jig because then I, a big profile. So we're basically doing that same route that we went in on the way out. So we fishing that heavy cover around where those fish spawned. Then the next move, we start fishing those secondary points, those channel swings. Those fish just use that same highway that they use to go in that spawning area. They just use that back out and we just follow them all the way back out to wherever they're gonna summer at. And uh, I'll go back to that structure jig again once they move on offshore structure, brush piles, points, whatever type of stuff that they're moving back on that they moved in on and I'll use a structure jig and typically then I'll use the three quarter probably more than a half those fish are starting to get a little deeper I can fish that three quarter a little faster but the one thing I'm going to do with it that I didn't do on the way in I'm going to fish that lobster again because again I want that big profile bait those fish are getting aggressive that water temperature is heating up I want a big slow moving lure you catch some of the big, biggest fish of the year that time too. And basically you're just targeting those same fish and we just made that circle. And that's the way I fish a jig during the spawning period.